everyone, it's Emily. Today's video is going to be all about my best reads of 2017, basically all the books that were my favorite ones. I highly recommend you subscribe because I'm planning on doing a whole series. I'm talking about the best, the worst, the most surprising, the most disappointing, and then the most overhyped books that I've read this year. I read 120 books this year, which is totally crazy when you think about it. But I have to say, it was a pretty meh reading year. I don't think there were that many books that blew my mind that are now all-time favorite ones that I would recommend to everyone. With that said, there are still nine books that are considered my favorites, plus a few special mentions. So, I mean, we're still doing pretty good. This year was the first time I've read any Stephen King's book, and there were some not so great ones, but there were also a really, really great one that I really wanted to recommend. I feel like whenever uh, I talk about Stephen King, people always ask me which book I would recommend reading first. And it's kind of hard because I've only read like six or seven of his books so far, which I will probably do a video all about this when I've read a few more. But I feel like everyone always recommend to either start with the Dark Tower series or like one of his really big books like The Stand. And I feel like it can be a little too much to begin with. So if I were to recommend a book to start with. I would go with one of my favorite books of the year and it is The Long Walk which he actually wrote under the name Richard Bachman and this was a really 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 good book. In this dystopian world there's an event every year called The Long Walk where a hundred teenage boys are chosen and they do volunteer, I don't know why, but they do volunteer to do this. They have to walk until there's only one of them standing which okay but I mean that means no break to sleep no break to go to the bathroom, they only have a specific amount of food, they can have as much water as they want, but then they have three warnings. Once they get all their warnings, they're basically shot in front of everyone. And you get to follow one of the characters and just follow how he gets into like a darker and darker place in his head as he's having to walk for so long. It was a very exhausting book to read. Like it's a pretty quick read. Like this is an edition that is like basically like mass market paperback and there's just under 400 pages. It's a quick read, but yes, you will totally feel like my legs are hurting and you're like tired for him. I do have to say though that in general, Stephen King is not super good at ending his books. So I think it's probably the only thing I didn't really like about this. I was still okay with it eventually, but at first I was like, really? So it's not a spoiler, but I mean, in general, Stephen King's ending are not that great, but I would highly recommend uh, checking this book out if that's something that seems interesting. You want to start going maybe into the horror side that he tends to do, but it's also very dystopian world. I do feel like I could have uh, seen a bit more of dystopian world in here and like understand a little bit more, which by the way, I didn't explain it, but at the end, the winner gets to choose uh, whatever they want, which is basically the motivation for these people to do this. But realistically speaking, I would never want to do this ever, but yeah, it was really great. I would highly recommend checking it out if that seems like something you would enjoy. It wouldn't be a favorites video if I didn't mention at least one or three <laughs> Brendan Sanderson's book because he's one of my all-time favorite author, fantasy author, and I have read a few of his books this year and obviously most of them made it to his video. The first one I want to talk about is The Hero of Ages by Brendan Sanderson. This is the third and final book in the Mistborn trilogy. I read the other two last year. That's why they were in that best of uh, 2016 video and this one is the only one here. I love this series. Brendan Sanderson is just amazing at creating world. You're gonna see the same thing. There's two other books that I want to mention from him and it's the magic system, the religion, the world, the characters are not his forte, but I mean, they're still likable. So clearly I was so under the spell of the book that I completely forgot to mention what I liked about it, the magic system. I feel like it's so different and original. And although you probably already know at this point because everyone has been mentioning it, but I thought it would be interesting and important to mention it. So basically in this world, the people that do have magical abilities have to ingest metals to use their powers. And usually they can control one, but then there are misborn people that can control all of the metals. And each metal actually gives the person very different powers. Although some are related and balance each other's out, which I think is fascinating. And basically you can imagine the epic battles that are in this book. But it's the first time in a really, really, really long time that a book, especially a final book in a series, leaves me dissatisfied. And I don't mean dissatisfied, but dissatisfied. It was amazing. Like everything, every piece fell into place and you're just like mind blown and I adored it. The whole series is basically worth it just to get to this book. I... Like, you know, sometimes like magic systems or like story, there's like a bunch of pieces that are never explained, not here. 
everything makes sense, everything is explained, and I just want to continue. There's basically going to be three trilogies in this world. Uh, I believe there's a few years in between, a few hundred years in between each uh, trilogy. So this is the last book in the first trilogy, and I will be continuing next year because it's awesome. I do have to say though, a lot of people recommend starting uh, by reading this trilogy by him whenever you want to start reading his books. I disagree. I will mention a second best one. I kind of get it because it's kind of in between why and adult fantasy. So if you're just starting to want to go into adult fantasy and you're still pretty intimidated, this is a great way of doing it. But if you are planning on starting reading fantasy or reading a first book by Brandon Sanderson, I would recommend one of his standalone. Technically, they will in the future have more books in those series, but they were first published as standalone. They stand perfectly on their own. You don't feel dissatisfied with the ending, but eventually we will get more in those worlds, which I'm super excited about. And once again, in those worlds, there's an incredible magic system. There's an incredible world building. There's religion. He loves to mix both of those. And I loved it. And the best part, they're completely different. I feel like it's kind of difficult for authors to always create a very different world. So they tend to include different stories in the same world, which I'm perfectly okay with it too. But it's just mind blowing how he does it. So let me start with Elantris, which in this world, there is a city called Elantris, where basically people that are considered kind of gods, they have magical powers, they're like all gray, uh, they live there. But once in a while, a random person in the world can wake up and be one of those and they get to go and live there. But then something goes wrong and you don't know why, but they start dying out. They're feeling like no energy, they don't have magical powers anymore. And then you follow a few characters that are trying to figure out what's going on. But at the same time, there's other cities that political intrigue, war, that are trying to uh, take over control of the world since there's no more people to defend them. I thought that was really brilliant. It, it's one of his first books, I believe, too. There is a love interest, but what I love about his books is that the romance is never, like, really the book. There's too many uh, fantasy books that are, like, romance disguised as fantasy. Not the case here. It's like, yeah, there's a love interest, but it's not, like, the whole thing. It's just one little uh, facet of the book, basically, but I really enjoyed it. Would totally recommend people uh, reading it too. I really enjoyed myself reading this. I would totally reread this. I cannot wait to see where the story goes in the future. But I think my favorite one from him this year that I've read was Warbreaker. And I, again, enjoyed the magic system, which is based out of colors. So basically, people that use magical powers, they extract the colors of things to use your magical power. So obviously, the more colors that you have around you, the more powerful you can be. And there's also a religion. Actually, one of the characters you're following is a god, which was actually really interesting. And I don't want to say too much because his books are so much better whenever you don't know too much. But once again, there is a love interest, but it's not cheesy. It's not like overwhelming. It's just like a little part of the book. It's definitely not the best part of the book. I also wanted to add that there's also one of my favorite characters of all time in here, which is a talking sword. Yep. Yep. It was awesome. And again, his endings are always mind blowing. Everything makes sense. And it's just something that you need to give a shot to. So again, if you're planning on reading one of his books, I definitely recommend checking either Elantris or Warbreaker because so good. I feel like talking about them, I'm not even giving them justice, but like literally his books, it's just like, just do it. You're going to love them. Let's go towards YA because I've read a bunch of really great YA books, which I feel like sometimes it can be hit and miss on booktube to talk about really hyped uh, YA books, which I've mentioned in the other videos if you want to see that. But one of them that I really, really enjoyed was We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. And this year I've read four different books and I'm realizing that where the main character is either uh, homosexual or bisexual, I believe. And it's like a coming of age type of story, but this is the best one out of the four. In my opinion, it's also the darkest one, but I feel like it was a little bit more complex and just made you think a lot more than the other ones, a lot less fluffy basically. And technically this one is not considered contemporary. There's like a sci-fi twist to it, but I'm still overall kind of considering it contemporary because it was sold to me as a sci-fi and I kind of disagree. So the main character you're following is having like a really, really rough time. Uh, his boyfriend killed himself the year before. He's having a lot of issues at home. He doesn't get along with his brother. He lost his friends. He's being bullied. Like life is not looking good. And in between all of these things, he's also being abducted by aliens and they're giving him the choice to hit a button that will save the whole planet. If he doesn't hit it in, I don't remember how many days, 144 days, 
uh, then everyone will die. This book will definitely not leave you in one piece. I definitely felt the feels. There were some really great friendships in there and it's just something I would recommend reading if you are into those books. And yeah, a really a great contemporary sci-fi twist, coming of age type of book. The next one is a type of book that if you like it, you will not be able to put it down. You're just gonna want to devour the trilogy, which is what I did. But I can't say too much about it without ruining it, so can't spoil it for you. But if you enjoyed Dark Matter by Blake Crouch, I would recommend checking out his other book, which is Pines. This is the first book in the Wayward Pines trilogy by Blake Crouch. I realized that I had loved the other book. I had put it in my best of 2016, and why was I not continuing reading his books? It's something I need to do more of. So I started this one, which is also a sci-fi thriller. Definitely makes you feel like on edge the whole time. Like I was stressed reading this, but in a good way. The main character is a secret service agent who is sent to try and figure out what happens because two of his coworkers disappeared in a little town called Wayward Pines. And he gets there and things are really, really weird. Like everyone is acting strange. He doesn't know what's going on. He woke up at the hospital and he doesn't remember how he got there. And I can't say anything else because these books are kind of short. I do have to say, like, all of the books are, like, just under 300 pages. In my personal opinion, they should have probably been made in, like, two books instead of three. It was, like, kind of, like, trying to stretch it. However, I do think it was worth it. I really enjoyed it. The twist at the end of the first book will make you decide if you want to continue or not, but devoured it. I did watch a TV show, which I need to mention, that not as good. Like, really not as good. The second season is really crap. And if you uh, actually watch it after reading it, which I recommend doing, like don't start with the TV show. You're gonna be like me probably and yell at the TV the whole freaking time this is not how it happens in the book. So <laughs> just be prepared. So if you like sci-fi thrillers, I think you uh, would probably like this. And yeah, I did. When I read this book, I definitely didn't expect to like it this much because again, it's a way uh, contemporary that is really, really raved about. and again, can be hit and miss, but this one was definitely a hit for me. And it is The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. And do not be fooled, because this looks like a such a nice, fluffy, fun, cute pack- uh, not package- <laughs> cover book, but this was dark. It's kind of a difficult story to explain. The main character, basically, uh, she lost her sister recently. Her sister was kidnapped and I believe maybe raped and uh, killed and nothing really ever happened to uh, the men that did that and she never had that closure and she's like really internalizing a lot of her feelings. She is pushing everyone away and I feel like this is the type of book that the story isn't as important as the messages into it. I feel like it's an important book because of all the messages about uh, slut shaming, rape culture, and actually I need to grab my laptop. I want to read you a few quotes from this book that will make you decide if that's something you want to read or not. Okay, so I have two quotes I want to mention. The first one is, but boys will be boys, our favorite phrase that excuses so many things, while the only thing we have for the opposite gender is women, said with disdain and punctuated with an eye roll. Then the other one is, I live in a world where not being molested as a child is considered luck. So, as you can see, uh, definitely some really rough, tough subject, but I would totally recommend uh, reading it if that's something that you think you would be interested in. But at the same time, I can't recommend it enough, so again, don't be fooled, that cover looks so like, oh, it's gonna be a light, fluffy read, but it wasn't. I actually need to uh, check out more of her books because I really like what she was uh, talking about. I would totally recommend this read for sure. Next one is something I was not expecting that I would put in this video because you might have already noticed I am not someone that likes romance. I just don't. And again, I was mentioning earlier that some fantasy books are like fantasy disguised, like romance disguised as fantasy. And this one is kind of that, but at the same time, there's a lot more to it. So I did really like it. I also read the whole trilogy, so that says it all. But I wanted to talk about A Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. This is the first book of the uh, Revenant Chronicles, which again, I read the trilogy. I feel like the three books are very different from each other. So I will be mentioning differences, but the first book you start by following a princess and the day of her forced wedding, she decides to just run away. And there are two men that go after her. There's the prince she was supposed to marry and there is an assassin sent to kill her. That's the premise of the first book. You don't know who is who throughout the book. And it was super interesting. And she's also like living a like normal life as she's hiding. And it was kind of a like everyday life type of thing, which I really enjoyed. The second book was probably my least favorite one. And there was a lot more political intrigue, which I know a lot of people enjoy. And then the third book was more like war, epic war between like a few different kingdoms. So it doesn't stay just like that, but 
do prepare yourself. There's going to be some love triangles and that won't be for everyone. However, I'm usually not into it and I did really, really enjoy this one. So I can see a lot of people enjoying it too. So yeah, uh, I didn't expect it to uh, be this good. I really wanted to mention this book too. This is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers and this is a feel-good sci-fi book. It's also very, very character driven. So if you're someone that loves a lot of action, this isn't really the one. But again, it's something that I love the world and the characters. The characters were awesome. The relationship between them was amazing. But I love how diverse the cast was and all diverse the aliens were because obviously their relationship, their societies are all different from ours. So it was really great to just see it and see it as diverse as it was. So if you are someone that, I, for example, really likes contemporaries and you want to get into sci-fi, this could be the way to do it. I really enjoyed myself. I would totally recommend it. I did read a second one, which I also did like. You end up, uh, ended up following two of the characters that are in here. And it was good, but I don't think it was as good. It didn't make it to my best of. However, I will definitely continue the series no matter what because I don't know, I just really like the world. But seriously, this is gonna make you like smile and feel good and just like those friendships are just too adorable. Now I have a few special mentions. Uh, in the beginning of the year, I was really into that premise of someone reliving his life over and over again, which I need to continue reading those books because I find it fascinating to just compare the stories. So there's two of them that I want to mention. They have really different stories, like very different. The first one is The First 15 Lives of Harry August by Claire North. And this one you follow, Harry August, who lives his life over and over again. And then one day, I believe during his 12th, 11th life, there's a little girl that comes uh, as he's dying in bed to let him know that someone is changing the future and he needs to try and fix it. With that said, I do want to mention a few things. If you want like absolutely zero spoiler, you can go ahead and skip ahead when the book is not on the screen anymore. However, I do think that some of these things can make you like the book more or less if you know in advance. Personally, I feel like I would have enjoyed the book more if I had known. So just letting you know, they're going to be minor spoilers. Like I'm not going to ruin the book for anyone. So basically he lives his life over and over again, but he wakes up as a kid, same place, same time, like he's not time traveling or anything. And he comes uh, into consciousness around, I don't know, like four or five, whenever you would become conscious as a kid. And then he lives his life and then he's trying to figure out what's going on. And that part is more like thriller, kind of mystery, action packed type of thing. So if you don't expect this bit, you might not enjoy it as much. I also wanted to mention since he lives his life like at least 15 times, you would expect someone to start thinking a certain way, you know, like, things get confusing and there's a lot of back and forth between his life. It's not like in order. So as someone, if you don't know this, you might become a little like confused and not necessarily enjoy it as much as if they were in order, for example. I know personally that's one of the things that I got to a point sometimes where I was like, whoa, where is this going? But with that said, I believe I gave it four stars. It was really, really incredible. I loved it. I don't want to say more because there's a few more things I would mention, but again, don't want to spoil anything. So if you are someone that like me likes that premise, I would definitely recommend checking out The First 15 Lives of Very August. Another book with a similar premise, however a very different take on it, would be Replay by Ken Grimwood. And this one is a little bit older. This one came out in 1986. What I like about this one is that you're following a main character who is in his 40s, I believe, and he dies on the phone talking to his wife. He has a heart attack and then he wakes up while he's 18 in college, like reliving his life. Obviously in both cases, they remember their past lives. I didn't mention it, but it's an important point. And I don't want to mention what's the twist in here because there's definitely some important tidbits. But what I did like is how realistic this was. Like this didn't become like, I feel like this one became like a very like vague, big story. And this one really focused on that character and how he would relive his life and what he would do. Like really realistic things. Like first thing you would do, like as a normal person, you would probably go and gamble to make a bunch of money, right? There's no time traveling. It's definitely him like making different choices for his life and how it goes. And I really liked it. I would definitely recommend uh, people checking that one out. Uh, it's definitely more like adult. I feel less like adventure, more like making you think a lot more. And again, there's a little bit of a twist and I think people would uh, like it if that's something obviously you're into, but I really enjoyed myself. Last but not least, I wanted to give a shout out to the Pottermore Presents Little Stories. Uh, if you are a Potterhead, someone that loves Harry Potter, which obviously I am, I would recommend checking out those quick little stories. The, the three of them are around like 70 pages, so they're pretty quick reads. And 
they just add more info obviously if you know everything maybe there's nothing that new for you but it just felt really nice to see the backgrounds of a few different characters for example i don't remember which one i think might be the first book you learn more about uh, professor mcgonagall which i love and then you learn a little bit more uh, about lupin how he became a werewolf and just i don't know uh if you just want more in that world because i always want more i would recommend uh, checking those out too so that's it guys, those are the best books that I've read this year. Let me know in the comment section what are the best books you have read this year because I want to know. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up to help other people find it. Don't forget to subscribe and don't miss any future videos. I will be putting on the screen some of the videos from that series so you can check those out and I will see you in my next one. Bye!